The Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by WizardSwap.io, a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. All right, keep it rolling All like that. Right, see. What do we got, man? All right, pulling up my screen here. All right, first news link. It's from Rotten. Rotten Wheel. Rest in peace, dear Monero visitor. Made the biggest mistake of my life. 75k gone. I spent around 10 years in crypto, and last night made the biggest mistake of my life. I was supposed to do some laundry on a sizable amount of BTC I was looking to wash. I created a new Feather wallet for this entails, then began to wash the BTC through an exchange, converting XMR so far so good. At the end of the day, I had 75k XMR in my Feather wallet before going to sleep. Unfortunately, I found out this morning that I made a grave mistake and backed up what I would later realize was the wrong seed phrase for the end XMR wallet containing all the funds. I usually immediately create a backup for this on my other computer where I keep some wallet data to be extra careful, which I thought I did. Turns out I actually backed up the wrong seed phrase. The folder in computer one where I started the seed phrase and encrypted text file was named very similar, similar to a previous wallet from a few months back. I thought it was a duplicate file slash the wrong one and I stupidly deleted it. At this stage, not knowing what I had done, the wallet was still open and the funds were still intact. I could have easily sent it to another wallet. However, I later turned off the machine. Waking up now and finding out that my other backup computer had the wrong backup of the wallet seed. Right now, I'm fairly devastated. Although I've been doing this for a long time, I ran into some roadblocks in the past years and had to build myself back up. Unfortunately, it would seem as though that 75K is now gone forever. The wallet.keys file still exists on my Tails OS persistent drive, but this password protected with what is probably a 25 plus character password with all random text symbols. Maybe one day a quantum computer can brute force it for me. Moral of the story, back up your backups. Then back them up some more. Always verify. Do not run five balls at once. And do com- do and try to do complex tax with with life changing money while you are tired. Still have the dot keys file here in my tails persistence, but no way of cracking the for it. <laughs> uh, that's a major uh, rip. Yeah, the people are like, um, if you scroll down in the comments, I was like pour- pouring out for a Monero, fellow Monero user. People are like, well, that's the problem. He wasn't a user. He was just trying to ro- watch his Bitcoin um offering i don't know think thinks thinks he's a fed i don't know i don't know what the fed angle would be like like what's what what's the influence they're trying to create by making that post right they're they're warning people to not lose their not lose their private keys i mean if that's if that's a, yeah i mean I, honestly like the move for this for me is like as soon as i create a wallet i just i copy the seed phrase and i put it in my password manager my end to end encrypted password manager he, I, it sounds like he, he made, I mean, he, because he was using tails, it's kind of harder to immediately do that. But, uh, yeah, that's, it's easy to right, make but, like that. But people were speculating, like, is this like an actual dude who really lost his, his Monero? Or or is this like... Yeah. Yeah. We don't really know. I think it's an actual, right? Because it seems pretty detailed. Like, yeah, he's just telling his story here. Um, and he lost it does his seem Monero. Pretty detailed. Like, I mean, that's, yeah. it sounds exactly like something that could very well happen if you're like tired and not right. really paying attention enough uh so my, my only theory for it being like a fake story is if he's trying to create an alibi for his his lost monero right the, you know he uh exchanged bitcoin for monero on an exchange and then pulled it off and look now it doesn't exist anymore you see look i even made this post in 20 2024 on reddit explaining how i lost my monero i don't have it anymore so it, it could be it could be a you know an alibi for a, a boating accident that would be my my only uh a theory other than it actually being a real post so yeah lesson learned number one shouldn't be washing your bitcoin into monero just use monero and number two write down your keys guys write down your keys just do it what else we got? All right. Next up, we've got a tweet from Gray Rabbit Finance. I truly believe that Bitcoin is a liquidity trap that the West created to prevent the flow of capital into precious metals markets. When you talk about the ability to debase people through inflation, their savings, and their 401k, a liquidity trap is the precursor to total control through a CBDC. The West knows that a rival BRICS system backed by gold slash commodities will eventually present itself. 
This trap prolongs their fiat system while citizens of the West will think that they have gotten out of the system with BTC, only to be left holding fool's gold. The perfect storm for accepting a CBDC after they wrote stocks, bonds, and Bitcoin. Your average person will be left with absolutely nothing to show for. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, it's pretty it's pretty pretty good theory, right? I mean, with with how many of these large institutions hold like so much Bitcoin and governments, like we see, mm -hmm. you know, like just recently with the Mount Gox coins being released, and then uh mm -hmm. the German government, which was uh releasing bitcoin uh selling bitcoin off that that was enough to like cause a major move in the market a downward mm -hmm. move and just think about how many big institutions like hold so much bitcoin right like they're going to be at a position where they can they can rug you on bitcoin if they want to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like your almighty bitcoin can can like i mean just what happened on the fourth it was it's pretty it's bloodbath it's kind of a bloodbath could have been worse but yeah and most people just don't don't hold their Bitcoin, right? <laughs> they just keep it on. Yeah, most people don't actually hold their Bitcoin. And to be yeah. fair, that was kind of a bloodbath on the wider, the broader crypto market because unfortunately, mm -hmm. like most of it's tied together still. Um, but it is it is always interesting to me, like how much Bitcoin's held by large institutions and governments. Like that that's mm -hmm. concerning to me. Well, this this idea that Bitcoin is fool's gold, that Bitcoin is potentially effectively the CBDC, uh, that Bitcoin is co-opted, these ideas are feel like they're going more mainstream in terms of the crypto sphere, and these are ideas that we've been talking about here forever. So it's nice to see, right? I mean, this is in our own circle of people saying this. I don't even I don't know who this guy is, Gray Rabbit Finance, uh, but these are ideas that we've been talking about for a long time. In Monero land, uh, our issues with Bitcoin, the fact that it's effectively been co opted, and we're seeing this idea go more mainstream for sure. I'd say people are starting to realize, yeah, Bitcoin is kind of like a, a CB, like a it's almost like a precursor to the CBDC, right? But Just you're seeing a lot of people out there talking out against it, right? More than I've ever seen. I mean, yeah, for sure, yeah. All right, next up, we've got a tweet from uh, Lola Leeds. Uh, good morning. Today is a good day. The U.S. government has agreed to release TDEV on bail, according to a letter filed on July 3rd. So this is the first time I've actually heard that TDEV is actually in the United States. No, I don't or think is he yeah. still in, Or was he still in Spain? I thought he was still in Spain. On behalf of the U.S. government, then, I'm yeah, guessing, based on that I sentence. I think, but I don't know. I don't know. TDEV's defense makes incredibly smart arguments stating that the U.S. government's prosecution is an aggressive as it is expansive akin to changing our charging Apple for cybercrimes committed with MacBooks. And like such a charge, it impermissibly uses criminal law to affect policy change. He is facing charges he can, should, and will contest at trial. Putting the charges in context, the defense states that to stop Bitcoin wallet providers from providing privacy and security services or to force them to police their customers as banks must, the government has not sought to change the law or even FinCEN's guidance on it. The letter states that the U.S. government has prosecuted individuals operating a service they had every reason to believe was legal and stretched to decorate the charges with decontextualized quotes that attempt to sketch out their agreement to criminal transactions the government does not allege they knew about in advance or exp Wow. What does that Hello? Hi, can you still hear me? Hello? Oh, yeah, I thought you cut out for a second. All right, well, that's, uh, that's, you know, that's good news. Yeah, that's, that that's is good, good news, news for sure. Um, L Lola is actually going to be a speaker at Monero Topai. Awesome. She's going to be, I believe, remote, but very cool that she's willing to come out and give a give a talk at Monero Topia. So uh, good news to see progress being made for sure. And we are all watching this very closely. So he's getting nice. released on bail. And then what's the current status with the other guy? Uh, no idea. I think he's released on bail as well, right? I think he went he went to court here in the u.s already really right already? i think the right uh, no not i think where they basically um indicted him right 
Oh, I couldn't tell I you. I, I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this yeah, is this is the missing. this is the biggest thing I've heard about this so far. Um, to be honest, because it seemed like it was pretty. There wasn't a lot of information coming out from that situation for quite a long time. Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure he already went into court in Pennsylvania. Um. Keon, yeah, Samurai Wild Co. Finally, Keon Rodriguez pleads not guilty, released on one million dollar bond. Wow. Yeah. So. Okay. So yeah, we'll we'll obviously follow that really closely. I don't know. Maybe uh, if anybody knows good people, we can talk to guys um, to get more insight into what's going on. Obviously it'd be awesome to like talk to the attorneys, but I guess that's not, obviously not, that's something they do during trials. I don't know, but uh, Lola obviously would be a good person to talk to. Like I said, she'll be a speaker at Minerotopia, but maybe I could, uh, maybe get her to jump on Miner uh, jump on the show or something at some point. She can give us her, her full take. She's obviously following us very closely. Yep. That'll be good to see. Okay. All right, next, um, got a tweet from Maisk, and I saw this earlier this week. Uh, there's some concerns about uh, the Signal app for desktop, um, where basically it's not, well, it's, it's storing the encryption key in a place that uh, is not really protected, and you're able to kind of copy the entire data folder of your signal desktop installation and move to another system without having to link that to your phone, right? So that's a, that's the dangerous part is that if you, if you had some kind of malware on your PC, they could copy your signal data over to themselves, to a VM and basically use your signal account without having to link a new device manually. Mm -hmm. So, and it looks like there's some PRs to to fix that, but they haven't been they haven't been pushed yet. Okay. So I mean, what, what what's kind of the takeaway here? What people sh should should do in response to this? I guess not use Signal on the desktop <laughs> until they okay. fix that. Um, okay. It's yeah, it's not it's not a great it's not a great like that that they should have they should have had that set up better by now. Um, mm -hmm. they should be using the secure storage on like the operating systems and their, their, their proper key stores for storing the encryption keys. Um, but it's, yeah. So if you want to avoid this as, as an issue, you just got to not use it right now until they fix that problem. Um, and I, I, this is on Mac OS. I'm not sure if this applies to other versions also, cause it just mentions Mac OS. Um, it's very possible this applies to other versions also. Um, but yeah, okay. avoid that if you uh, don't want to have uh, potentially have your signal data exfiltrated. And then, I mean, you know, try to keep malware off your computer altogether, obviously. But if, if for whatever reason, like somebody is in the position to be able to steal your signal files, they could copy the data over and then basically use your signal account. So yeah, just, if you don't want to, if you don't want to have this be a potential threat then just don't use signal desktop yet all right so the big news of the week after a 10-year wait mount gox is finally being returned former customers of bankrupt exchange mount gox are preparing to be united with their lost bitcoin and it's a nine billion dollar windfall in late February 2014, Daniel was as a computer trading Bitcoin, Tokyo-based crypto exchange around Gox. Suddenly, the website flashed white and became unresponsive. In a panic, Daniel turned to answers for the internet from forum Bitcoin talk, where speculation had already begun. Mount Gox was in trouble. Uh, going through the history of Mount Gox, um, which I'm sure most of us here know. Um, yeah. So Actually, pro probably a lot of people here don't know. Okay, do you want me to read? I'll yeah. read the first. I'll read no, the first no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't have to go too, too crazy. But I'll just read this. Okay. Daniel, who lives in Europe, was a university student at the time. After making a bit of money trading Bitcoin on Mt. Gox, he had posted almost all of his wealth to the exchange. When Mt. Gox fell on offline, Daniel says he went into full crisis mode. He needed that money to fund the remainder of his time at school. Uh-oh, people finding out about the dangers of a custodial exchange all the mm -hmm. way back, that back then. Uh, on February 28th of that year, Mt. Gox filed for bankruptcy. Hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin back then worth around 400 million now 45 billion 
have been stolen in an elaborate heist, the company said. It had practically no remaining funds with which to process withdrawals. Mount, Mount Gox had happened when I was first becoming a Bitcoin maxi. And so as it happened, I was celebrating it. I was like, oh my God, look at the price. It's going down. <laughs> like I, I never, I never thought I'd have a chance to buy cheap Bitcoin. Uh, and Bitcoin at that time, like, I mean, that, that market you, went Gox, for the cheap. from a high of 13. Yeah. went from like 1300 was the mm -hmm. high in like 2014 or whatever. And then with Mt. Gox, it crashed to like under 200 bucks, crashed to like 150 at some wow. point. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah. There you go, guys. Doug secretly, uh, we're a celebrating Maxi, and he's secretly <laughs> a Bitcoin billionaire. Confirmed. Uh, I, I have, I have, I didn't, I didn't have a lot of money at the time, and uh, <clears throat> you know, it's, it was all. I, I, I have no, I have no Bitcoin really. Um, I moved, I moved to Monero. He's got for, no crypto at all. It's which, all gone. I, I moved to Monero. Uh, obviously, lost a bunch of that Monero in a boating accident along the way. There's been, there's been, there's been losses. Um, but obviously, that the price of Monero versus. Bitcoin took a, has taken a major major hit over the years. So, uh, but overall, uh, would would never would not you know would, no no turning back and uh, definitely don't regret my decisions. Um, and uh, yeah, the the the, the theories I have had have only seemingly have come closer to being fulfilled uh, as we've gone through through the years. So we shall see what happens next. But yeah, I, I was I was there. I was there for Mount Gox. These people yeah, must be, true. you know, these people must be really, really happy that they're getting their their coin back. Obviously, they're getting a lot less Bitcoin than what they lost, but it's worth a lot more in dollars than it was then, right? So somebody yeah. might be getting might be getting, you know, what are they saying? They're getting like a fifth or a tenth of what they lost, I think, each. They're getting some percentage, right? So a guy might who had 10 Bitcoin is only getting one. But he's still in dollar value. He's getting a lot more than what he would have gotten at that time, right? He's unfortunate. Those... They still have been majorly robbed yeah, from their yeah, uh, initial yeah, holdings. They... But yeah, their Bitcoin got fucking fleeced. Their Bitcoin got fleeced. Hey guys, don't use centralized exchanges, guys. Uh, and fun fact: so Mount Gox actually stands for Magic the Gathering Online Exchange. It was created by people who played Magic the Gathering online. It's a funny name. Most people mm -hmm. don't know that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm lucky I didn't start using Mount Gox. Jesus, that would have really sucked. The the few Bitcoin I would have had would have been gone. <laughs> All uh, right. Flor Florida man is asking, how many at Porkfest accepted BTC? Uh, not a lot. Not a lot. Seriously. Um. I mean, I guess they would accept it, but nobody was using it. Nobody was really using Bitcoin um, as far as I could see. So it was like Monero and BCH, some Dash from years back. There was a big Dash following at Porkfest, so that still like <laughs> lingers there. Like crypto never dies, right? So there's, but really Monero has edged that taken over, I'd say. And, and BCH, Monero and BCH, I would say, are the most used cryptos at Porkfest. BCH, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People don't uh, want and to I'd say, and I, I'd like, say yeah. Monero has a beat. Um, because just why? Why? Well, you know, what's the advantage of using BCH? There is, there really is none. It's just the people that have it. Uh, I mean, over Bitcoin, it's still um, over Bitcoin. Yeah, for sure. But otherwise, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just stick with Monero. All right, next mm -hmm. up. Tweet from Crypto Tweety. Remy St. Felix, leader of a crypto robbing gang that terrorized wealthy victims, has been convicted. The 24 year old, I think we read about this last week, the 24 year old Florida man led a crew that stole hundreds yeah. of millions in crypto by force and tried to launder the stolen funds through Monero. This case right here is proof that you don't need to witch hunt Monero users when you can just go after the criminals directly. Yeah, we posted this last week. I just thought Chill made a good point, right? Like using old fashioned police work. To catch criminals, um, that's how they that's how they solve this, all right? So, this baloney that we all have to be KYC'd up the ass and whatnot, and 
uh, it shows you there there are other ways. Yep. Uh, next up, tweet from Monerable. Monero.town is being DDoSed by a Tor exit nodes for 26 hours already. Uh, and this is funny because uh, this started happening at the same time uh, Cake started getting some of our endpoints DDoSed by Tor exit nodes. Uh, the amount of traffic mm. actually is pretty small. Um, it's actually not that big of a DDoS, but we didn't really have any protection on a few of our endpoints, so they were just being being targeted. So yeah, I haven't been following this closely at all. So this this just happened what over the, the past week? Yeah, this week. Okay. And so who's getting DDoS? Cake? You, you get a Trocador too. Uh, Trocador was. Um, I think they're fine now, but they definitely have been a lot recently. I'm not sure if it's the same people. I feel like Trocadors may have been like a larger DDoS attack. Mm. Um, and now but... were nodes nodes getting DDoS too somehow? Like because nodes no. were down, right? No. Um, oh, okay. Because I know like XMR Bazaar, we were going off of like using a remote node. We were using like Sets node or something, and that went down. Really? Okay, because I have noticed some some and I thought, weird I thought a cake intermittent note issues too. with the nodes like not fully like I guess responding to the client. Although every time I've tried to look myself, it looks fine. But I see examples mm -hmm. from other people where they're like, "Yeah, I can't use this node; it's showing up as red," which is really weird. Um, I, I'm guessing there's been a lot of like endpoints they have tried to target but haven't really fully been able to like ddos them because they're more resilient and actually have ddos protection already mm -hmm. um so the only ones they've been able to take down are the ones that well just didn't have like basically anything um which is which is kind of normal um but we're having a separate issue with cake pay this week anyway um uh, we ran into a bug with btc pay server that's preventing it from being able to start up uh so we're just waiting on a a fix mm. for that um, but it's kind of ironic they tried DDoSing at the same time. It doesn't really bought, mean anything right now because Cake Pay is already going to be down for a little while. Mm -hmm. That's kind of random. Don't know the motive yet. Obviously, don't know who's behind it. It's a bunch of Tor exit nodes. Um, and we, as far as I can see, we haven't gotten any extortion email yet. But mm -hmm. this DDoS attack is so like minor that there's there's nothing they could possibly ask for. Like it's it's probably just like. It's probably just some kind of script kitty thing. <laughs> and yeah, Monero, Monero transaction count is is low. That hasn't been getting spammed at all. No, Monero Monero as a network is not being spammed. They're just they're just trying to DDoS some websites of people in the mm -hmm. Monero community, like Monero dot town. So yes, interesting. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, XMR Bazaar has been fine in terms of being up. Uh, I don't think Monero Topia went down at all. So, okay. All right. And All right. I think, oh, we got, I think we just got one more here. What do you got? Um, so this cool resource created by Hardened Steel, um, it's just a, a GitHub repository called Help for mm. XMR that has Monero contributors list. Would you like to contribute to Monero, but don't know where to start? The list, this list onboards to new contributors, um, which is, kind of cool so you got a bunch of in various okay. places to go for information on monero how to uh start like learning about it and the code base um and all the various components and all the wallets that exist um nice little resource uh because monero is nice who put that up there uh it's someone named hard and steel hard and steel okay. on github and i think this guy has another i think he's got another repository with other So he's made like a, a one-stop resource for somebody who's just getting into Monero, trying to start contributing to the code. Yeah, base. exactly. And I'm trying to find, um, let's see if I can find it. Guys, like, like, and share. We're at 169 live. It's actually kind of a slow day today. Same. We have 129 live on X and like 40 on youtube like and share spread it 
Okay, I think this is actually the same repository. I just totally skipped over it. So there's a place, um, have products to sell. You click on that, and you've got some options here uh, mm -hmm. showing you how you can sell with Monero. Uh, BTC, set up your own BTC based server store, set up your own Bitcard AI store, sell on Monero Market.io, or sell on XMR Bazaar. I added this one. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Uh, Wait, go back go back up to that for a second, Lucy. Mm, okay. Set up your own BTC pay server store. Set up your own BitCart. I would also add like, <clears throat> like the WordPress. Use the WordPress plugins. Yeah, maybe WooCommerce. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, WooCommerce, WooCommerce, and the Monero Gateway. Uh, use the Monero Gateway in combination with WooCommerce. That's that's been a pretty decent solution for us. I mean, we've we've used that on Gratuitous, Gratuitous right? and yeah. Monero Monerotopia to this day. Obviously, I think we should move over to BTC Pay Server. We just haven't. Um, yeah, I do really like BTC Pay Server. Um, I will say because because of what it's trying to accomplish, um, which is like working with tons of different cryptocurrencies. If you use the altcoin version, um, mm -hmm. it can get a bit messy, and you can run into some some issues or bugs occasionally, uh, like like we did. Um, mm -hmm. And that's kind of just um, due to the requirements of, you know, they're, they're dealing with a lot of different software that works together. And that's a hard thing to do. Um, that's not like a knock on BTC, PT, BTC pay server specifically. Uh, but if you want to accept like a lot of different cryptos, like natively, then BTC pay server is perfect for that. Um, and it is, it is really nice to use. You can set up a, a nice checkout page and you can have like, you can customize the crap out of it. And it's pretty great. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll have to do that on Monerotopia and Noto and whatnot. We'll 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 get there. We'll get there. Yeah, right now we use the Monero Gateway and then we also use the now payments plugin on WooCommerce. Yes. Um, yep. So we could accept any crypto through now payments and then it just auto converts into Monero. Does does a job. So when you use BTC pay server, uh, obviously you could accept can you can you do that? Do you have like is there swapping built into it? Obviously, I would use it to natively accept Monero. Yeah, so there's no like like first party, but you can install a plugin. So you can install right, a Trocador right. plugin that allows you Got to it. use Trocador within BTC Pay Server. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you, people can swap whatever they want, pretty much. Awesome, awesome. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, we want to build that into the Nodo. That's another thought, right? That'll be one of the apps, BTC Pay Server, easily run it on the Nodo. Eventually, maybe turn the Nodo into kind of a plug and play POS system that can be used in storefronts. A lot of ideas there.